How's it going, people? Beautiful people of Instagram. This is Jose Trujillo. I hope everybody's doing great. Welcome again. I'm in the car studio. I'm not in the art studio right now. I'm picking up my son from school. And I wanted to uh, touch on something really quick here for you guys. I wanted to bring some value. Whatever that is, I hope that is valuable to you. I hope that you find some valuable some valuable thing here. Uh, I won't be making eye contact because I can't right now. My eyes are on the prize. But... Uh, But you can hear my beautiful voice. And I think that that's what matters right now. My la 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 la. My beautiful voice. So guys, I want to talk to you about this quote by Hen... Uh, well, it would, it would be Enru, right? Enru Matisse. But I think you can pronounce it Henry Matisse. If you like to. Matisse, the great Matisse. Uh, of course, one of the finest painters of the 20th century and uh, and on uh, this guy was famous for very much just about anything you can be famous for during the time of Picasso and Brock right this guy's work is very uh, avant-garde and super uh, ferocious I guess you could say right Ferocious when it came to creating artwork, extremely prolific and insatiable. Right? They, they created artwork till they die. Right? Insatiable people. They were thirst. They had a, a lot of thirst for life. Uh, this guy came up with this quote. Right? I don't. I don't think that artists come up with quotes. I think they just say stuff, and people are like, "I'm going to quote that." He said, "Creativity takes courage." Right? Henri Matisse said, "Creativity takes mother and and courage." I'm sure he would have said it like that if he'd be living today. When we hear that quote, often we think that, oh yeah, it takes courage because you have to be so avant-garde and you have to do things that people are uncomfortable with. And you have to, you know, do... Like, we, we go on the comfortable side. That's comfortable to say. How's it going? Megan, how you doing? Good to see you. So when we, when we think about artwork and, and, and this type of quotes, like creativity takes courage, we think about, I know I did, I know a lot of artists that I know, <laughs> we talked about this kind of stuff uh, in my art circles when I was younger, and, and we thought about this kind of stuff, right? Like, oh yeah, avant-garde, man, you know, it's, you know it's, it takes courage to fight the man, it takes courage to... To uh, you know, to, to be different, to be, uh, and certainly all those things are true. I'm not I'm not discounting them by using my my awesome surfer boys. Is it a surf? I don't think it's a surfer voice. Uh, but I'm not discounting that truth of that, right? That of course, uh, people that are very creative, but very they, they, you know, they're very brave. Uh, one of the people that I was I was recently watching. Uh, a uh, documentary on that was uh, uh, Basquiat, right? Michel Basquiat. Uh, he, very, very strong young guy when it came to, to his creativity. Very strong guy. Uh, and certainly that's what it is, right? So when we see this type of people, Warhol, Basquiat, we see the avant-garde, uh, Coons today, I don't know, uh, Damien Hirst, whatever, whoever you can think of. We see this type of avant-garde and we're like, yeah, man, creativity takes courage. But I personally feel like we miss something when we say this. You know, when we say, when we're talking about the, 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 and by what I mean avant-garde, guys, for those of you who don't know, it's just uh, forward thinkers, right? Artists who are, who are uh, at the trench, at the, the trenches, right? They're in the, they're, they're in the line of the unknown. There's only a handful of artists that are actually doing that in a prolific manner, in a in a in a, in a way that that they can create some sort of impact in their careers and in the world. There's only a handful, really, usually that that are that are. Anyways, that's another thing. But that's what that's what we usually think of when we think about creativity taking courage. You know, being something that takes courage. I think we're missing the point very much. I think that. 
one thing that we need to think about when when we hear a quote like creativity takes courage is that regardless of what you're doing whether you're doing something derivative or you're doing you know arts and crafts little flowers whatever you're doing it doesn't matter none of it matters you do it enough you're going to become avant-garde whether you know it or not you're going to become avant-garde at something uh what really takes the courage is showing up to it showing up to it however see again my my whole battle battle cry is just stiff and do it you know just do it because it it takes so much courage because we have all these things that we don't know how how they're affecting us we have no idea how many things are affecting us we think it's we think it's it's uh it's society we think it's the man we think it's lack of income you know lack of resources we think it's all of these things but it really isn't uh we're very much futurists and i don't mean this in a in a in a, in a trying to be like a, a smart ass by saying that we're futurists like i don't know a futurist thinkers no, we're futures in the sense that we're, we spend too much time in the future. We're not really, we're not grounded. We're not really present. Uh, when you have a goal or you have something that you love, you spend a lot of time in the future. And, and, and it's sadly enough time to hold you back in the past. You know, you spend a lot of time in the future because we don't want to repeat some bad thing that we think happened in the past. Some loss or some negative thing. So we're like, oh man, how do I prevent that? tomorrow how do i prevent that next week because i don't like the feeling that i had two years ago you see where i'm going at guys i hope i'm making any sense to someone out there this kind of shit used to happen to me a lot and i know that this is a natural thing that happens to people a normal thing that happens to people to artists and to non-artists anyone that is living and breathing right now this is the kind of stuff that happens to us we look at something in the past where like man i hated showing up to that gallery because that gallery owner acted like a butt or i was insecure about my weight or i was insecure about my artwork or i was insecure just period insecure because i you know because i'm an insecure person or whatever and then i show up to this gallery with all of my insecurity and nope i didn't get a show i didn't even ask for the show i just knew i wasn't gonna get the show so i didn't even you know i didn't even ask to participate i'll tell myself that i did though and i'll have a negative experience in the past now every time that i'm gonna do something before i take the next step right i'm just playing a scenario guys i'm gonna think about that bad experience and i'm gonna say yeah but how do i prevent that negative experience okay so so of course it takes courage you know of course it's going to take courage of course creativity takes courage of all sorts not just creating artwork you know which is the most creativity we, th we can think of creativity in the sense of being a, a good dad a good mom a good husband wife partner whatever a good friend a good employee a good artist it's going to take creativity because why does it take creativity because circumstances are never ever 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 almost never right i'm gonna put the word almost there the way that they ought to be circumstances always suck right they always suck that's that, that that's that's why we have so many complainers right like i would have done it but you know or i was gonna do it but because because you know the reality is that if 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 circumstances uh were perfect then mental circumstances are you know everything was perfect but my uncle passed away so I couldn't do anything for the next two two years, you know. And I was very close to my uncle. Shit like that, you know. Or everything was. I hope I'm making any sense, guys. <laughs> I have a moment to make eye contact. So, so that's why I feel that on Rumatiz wasn't talking about creativity in the sense that to be creative, man, you know, to come up with something new. I don't think he was. Like, I don't think he was talking about that. Granted, it fits there and it makes sense there. If you're, if you're uh, Jean Michel Basquiat and you are a graffiti artist in New York, and you know, and shit has always been bad for minorities, whether we accept it or not. And you know, so there's all these things, right, that are on the kid. 
of course it's going to it's going to take cre- uh, a lot of courage right to be a creative young person or 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 uh, a woman or whatever right nowadays if you're gay transgender whatever of course it's going to take creativity because because we're just stupid right human beings we're, we're always judging people we don't know we don't know the the whole thing we don't need to know the whole thing but we don't we, we, we don't stop judging we're in this perpetual state of judgment you know that's why we segregate that's why we we, we, we create lines and barriers anyways i'm going on a rant here but of course it's going to take courage right if you're if you're on any of those ends uh it's going to take a lot of courage right if you're a mom you have you have children and and you know and on and on and on and on and you have all these things present you of course it's going to take courage but aside from that what i think that he was referring to most was the courage of just showing up on a day-to-day it, it's it's. I remember watching this movie. What was it? The Prestige. I think that that was the name of the movie, where Hugh Jackman has to die every day. When I saw that, I was like, "Damn, man, that's how I feel." I know it's crazy, guys. I know I know it's crazy because I'm like, I'm like talking about some personal stuff. But look, every time I go into the art studio, every single time I go to the art studio, I feel like I have to die. I have to, I, I'm, I'm talking about metaphorically, guys. Okay, please bear with me. Like I feel like a death. If my ego doesn't die, I cannot create artwork for the love of me. And it's so painful to kill it. It's so painful. Every single day, I go through this pain. Like this extreme pain. Even if it takes me a few seconds. or It's this intense fear and pain. And it used to be so strong. It used to be like, it was a modern effing. It used to be so strong because I used to have this, this uh, anxiety attacks and all this when I was younger. So it was so strong. And, and, and it was it, it became a it became a muscle for me to show up regardless of it, right? Because things had to be just right. You know, if things weren't just right, it was this huge suffering. If I didn't mix the right green, right, it was this huge suffer, suffering. I don't know if it. I mean, we all have shit we carry around. So I don't know if this came up when I was a kid, growing up, or you know, uh, any type of thing, suffering, mental, uh, family, or whatever. But it was uh, it was a difficult thing to bear, right? Because I knew that that every time I created artwork, if I wasn't in flow, it was just suffering, right? And I, and then later on, I understood that in order to get in flow, I had to be there, right? I had to be there. Like flow doesn't happen; you make it happen. Flow flow doesn't happen by itself, guys. I I don't I, I don't care what anybody tells you. Flow doesn't happen by itself. Flow is a flow is a groove. It's a groove. It's only when you're there that that you start doing it. It becomes that you know it it, it opens. But you have to be there, otherwise it's not going to open. You have to show up. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for showing up, even though I'm not making eye contact. I uh, I apologize for that. But I thought, you know what? Content is content and good quality stuff. It's good quality stuff. And I believe that I'm I'm sharing some awesome quality stuff. And I believe at least, you know, a handful of you guys are going to be like, dude, I know. I get it. Uh, at least one of you is going to be like, dude, I get it. I know that. And, and it might help you. I don't know. So I started realizing that I need to have a lot of courage to show up. There need to be immense amounts of courage. Because things were, things never never appear the way they were supposed to, right? They never appear the way they were supposed to. If I showed up to the studio and I started creating artwork, then I started finding myself, right? But even then, I could go a whole day and still not feel the the, the joy and the groove and the you know the flow. It needed to be a couple of days, two, three, four days, maybe even a week before I start feeling the flow. I was like, oh man, I remember why, you know, why I do this. Uh, then it became two, three days. Then it became one day. And then now it, it's it's minutes, it's hours. Sometimes, sometimes I'll be like an hour. And right now in this, in this, uh, in this moment, in these days, because I do it so often that I, I almost, I'm learning how to, just to let it go, right? And what I mean, let it go, I don't mean not care i'm talking about a carelessness that needs to happen it's it's again it's like that movie the prestige when i saw it i saw hugh jackman jumping into that 
because he didn't have a double, right? Sorry, movie spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> so he had to he had to basically commit suicide, right? Uh, and, and I'm talking about a a killing of the ego, guys, of the ego, of the idea that things have to be a certain way. And it's so damn difficult. It's so damn difficult, you know? I mean, even saying attempting to do it, right? It's like, it's not even the way the way to say it properly. Because now you're attempting something. And now we're getting into a whole other discussion, right? But, but every day that I, that I go paint, there's this pain. There's this, there's this psychological pain. Like, oh man, okay. It's, uh, it's, I know I have to let go of my expectations and yet Susie or John if I'm doing a portrait for them right Susie needs to look like Susie and John needs to look like John even if I'm creating my artwork uh, abstract expressionist or somewhat impressionistic loose brush uh, otherwise Susie or John are not gonna pay for Susie or John uh, portraits but there's a there's a an, an amount of letting go and and it takes so much courage to let go. Those of you who let go, you guys know what I'm talking about. Because we want to, we want to, uh, we, we don't want to let go. You know, we we want to be able to get what we have in our minds onto the canvas. And I believe that is the killer of production. That is the killer of creativity and the killer of production. You know. The idea that you're like, oh man, I have something in my head. I know what it looks like. I'm going to put it on the canvas. Boom, it's dead. I don't know. Maybe it worked for you. It's never worked for me. It has never worked for me. Every time I try to do that, uh, it's not a matter of learning how to paint or knowing how to paint or painting a certain way. It's none of that. It's a matter of... Because I'm not saying to accept flaws, right? Uh... Although that's important, and it's and, and it's it's really important to do. Uh, it's not a matter of saying, "Oh, lower your standards." That's not what I'm saying at all either. What I'm saying is, allow what you know how to do come forward. Like, don't trick yourself. If you paint a certain way and you have a certain skill, don't trick yourself to try to come up with something else. Because it's a form of it's a form of sabotage. If you paint a certain way or you create artwork in a certain way, the mind is the mind often more often than not is going to start trying to tell you that not that you do better, that you do that it, it looks different, that it has to look a certain way. I don't know if I'm making any sense, it has to look a certain way. And when you're creating artwork, you have to you have to learn well you don't have to I did I don't know if you want to do that or not I had to teach myself train myself to suspend my mind and it's it's uh some other nothing to suspend your mind you know to it's like going to a to a to a to a magician show you have to allow yours you have to be gullible right otherwise you're not gonna have fun you have to have a certain level of gullibility right you have to be like oh yeah the little birdie disappeared right you know the birdie didn't disappear or you know that that you know that uh what's his name angel chris angel is not really levitating come on guys you know but if but if you don't allow yourself to be okay with it you're not going to be wowed right you're like oh he's not really levitating and then you won't have fun right but if you're like oh man how's he doing that and then there's that slight possibility that he made a pact with the devil <laughs> and you're like Yes, he's levitating. <laughs> there's that one, there's that little hair, you know, uh, hairline possibility that, that he is levitating. And if you don't allow yourself to believe that he possibly could be levitating, right? Or that, or how he do it, how's he, how does he do that? You, you won't be mesmerized, right? You won't be wowed. That's what magic does. It suspends the mind, right? It suspends it. It suspends logic, right? It suspends all of that. That's what dance does. Any type of art, that's what it does. It suspends it. You see a, a painting, 
you know, like, but, 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 but how? You know, it, it's, it suspends it for a little bit. So it gives you, it gives us space to breathe because our minds are always going a thousand per hour. It's, it's a form of meditation. Anytime, anytime you look at something beautiful, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sensei Devon. Sensei Devon says, I needed this, man. Awesome. I love that. So it, it suspends it, right? And so that's really what art is. You go to a gal. If, if you feel like crap, do yourself a favor. Go sit in front of uh, any gallery. Go to a, not a gallery. No, 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 not a gallery. Museum. Because galleries, uh, sometimes, see museums, a lot of museums have arts, artists that, especially the older ones, that had to work so much that they transcended ego when they were working, when they were creating artwork. Modern galleries, I it's hit or miss because there's a lot of living artists who still haven't transcended their ego when they work. And I mean this with, with a lot of sincerity, guys. Artists who work a lot get to transcend ego at least for minutes, for moments. Get to transcend that. that. Become little butterflies, right? You, you transcend... You, you touch the untouchable. I know I'm going esoteric here on you guys, but hey, you know, that's me. Uh, you touch the untouchable. And you get to have these moments of silence, right? The, the pure moments are the moments of silence. That's why people are like, are like, uh, we're going to honor those who passed, right? A moment of silence. We're going to honor, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to honor, you give it a moment of silence. Because silence is space. Space is a suspension of the mind. The mind gets suspended. You get to meet heaven, right? You get to meet God, at least for a second. And that's what happens when we create art. You suspend the mind. So it feels like a killing, right? It feels like uh, you're dying. You're dying. Because uh, who am I if I'm not thinking? Who am I if, if, if I'm not going a thousand per hour thinking about, should this color be here? Should that color not be here? Oh my God, I didn't do the hand right. Oh, the gesture, I was supposed to. In my mind, that person was supposed to be happy. Why does that person look, you know, with a different gesture or angry? Or why does that figure does not, not even has a face, right, on a painting? In my mind, it's supposed to be like this. Dude, you ain't painting. You're, you're, you're trying to mimic your mind. You're not painting. So it, it, takes, it, takes a lot of, it takes a lot of balls. I'm sorry. It does. You have to suspend it. It doesn't matter whether you're a realist painter or, or an avant-garde expressionist. You will have to suspend your mind if you're serious about creating artwork. And that's that's the hard part, right? And this is not just this doesn't just apply in artwork, this applies everywhere. If you sell cars, you're gonna have to suspend your mind, right? You're gonna have to suspend your mind. Why? Because otherwise, you're going to be like, oh my God, what if the prospect says no? What if the prospect says I'm a gimmicky? What if the prospect says, no, dude, get out of here. I'm just looking at cars. I don't want to buy anything. Don't bother me. Or what if he gives me a wrong phase or a rude phase? Or, uh, and, and, and to be a good car salesman, you have to suspend your mind. You have to be, it's all good. It's all good. It doesn't matter. I don't care what the person says. or the, I'm going to go through my drill. Right? I'm going to go through my drill. And so you have to suspend that, right? So anything that you do, I remember uh, I, I'm, I was uh, born in Jalisco, this, uh, in Mexico, right, where tequila and mariachi is from. We're famous for for having a, a Mexican cowboys called charros, right. And I remember hearing this from this uh, horseman, right. They're saying the only person that does not fall from the horse. I was trying to learn how to ride horses uh, when I was a kid. Every, everybody that not everybody but the people that are in ranches and, and around that they ride horses right of course but I remember hearing this horseman this very uh, uh, they're, they're considered like the I don't know like the elite you know cowboys these horsemen were like uh, I remember I remember hearing them say only the person that does not ride does not fall so don't be afraid of falling if you're falling it means you're riding and that stuck with me. I didn't know what it, what the hell it meant, right? I was nine years old when I heard that. Eight or nine years old. Uh, yeah, somewhere. I think I was eight years old when I heard that. And I still remember it, right? I still remember them saying that. Like, if you are afraid of falling, then you shouldn't ride. You shouldn't ride a horse. Because the only way to ride the horse is to suspend the mind, right? Everything is to suspend the mind. To be like, okay, it's cool. I could fall. But it's fine, right? I'm still going to ride the damn horse. And 
And that's life. So that's why I go back to Anru Matisse. Creativity doesn't take courage, guys. Creativity takes a lot, a lot of balls. Creativity is a difficult thing. And many times we go through this life as an artist thinking that it's going to be sweet and easy and whatnot. It shouldn't be hard. I'm not saying it should be hard, so we shouldn't make it hard. But we shouldn't expect either that we shouldn't have this expectation that it's always going to be happy, that it's always going to be, you should always be enthusiastic, but it's not always happy. You know, it's not always like, 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 it's not always easy. That's what I'm trying to say, you know. But you have to have the enthusiasm, otherwise you're not going to go through it. You have to have this, this enthusiasm that, that you're like, man, I really sucked on this painting, but it's cool. The next one is just going to get better. You know, you have to have that. Because otherwise, it's... it's. It, I, I heard... Uh, who said this? I think it was Steve Jobs, I think. He said, you have to really love what you do, otherwise uh, you have to be insane. I think, he's, I think it was Steve Jobs who said, you have to be insane, otherwise you're going to stop doing it. You know, you have to be obsessed with it. You have to be insane about it. Because otherwise it's going to be like, oh man. I keep thinking about the past, how I messed up on the past ones. How I messed up on, on getting that show, on, on selling that artwork, on creating that artwork, on whatever you're doing. I think about how... And the mind is very tricky. The mind is... is I mean, that's why in the Bible it's called the deceiver. I think it's this, the deceiver in the Bible. So, uh, I'm not trying to talk about religious stuff or anything like that. I'm just saying. Because <laughs> it deceives you, right? The mind is... It deceives you. The mind is, is, is the ego. It's, it's plays there. It's, it's necessary. It's supposed to be there. Because that's how we're growing. We're growing. As a species, we're growing. And we're going through this through this thing. Where we're figuring out things. We want to know everything. And that's what the mind does. The mind wants to know everything. Right? It's a tool. It's a tool. The, the problem is that we, we use it. We use it so much that we become used by it. Right? And, and we have to... That's why people meditate. That's why people pray. That's why people exercise. That's why people take walks in the beaches. We all recognize that we have to drop it. We have to drop it at some point. Right? And then we pick it up again and we use it. Because it's a tool. And then we have to drop it again. When you create artwork, if you're not dropping it, you're not doing it right. Okay? I just said it. I'm sorry. <laughs> if, you're, if you're creating artwork and you're not dropping it, you're not doing it right. You have to drop it. You have to drop the mind. And that's why I think uh, that that Henri Matisse meant this. He, I, I believe he meant it in an esoteric way. Why do I say this? I think most artists that become uh, masters... Right, that we're like we look back and we're like, oh man, that was a master, you know, as a master artist. They really become sort of monks in their own way. I mean, they they can still be douches, right? Like the castle was a total douche. <laughs> but when they create artwork, they operate kind of like kind of like Jedi masters. You know, they're a little monkish, monkish. You know, uh, they become a uh, 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 they awaken a bit. Let's call it that. They awaken a little bit. And and we all experience those moments. That's why we keep doing it. Because the only reason you want to do it is not because you want to wow people or you want to show people. That's that's the exterior. That's the that's the exterior. That's the peel of it. The reality of why we create artwork and why we're we can't wait to create the next piece. And we can't wait to get the materials and and, and we get this this exhilaration and this happiness and this joy. It's because we know we're going to go meet God for a little bit. Don't get this wrong, guys. That's the only reason why we love creating artwork. Whether you dance, sing, play music, whatever you do. The only reason is because we go meet God for a little bit. We go say, hey, how's it going, God? I'm here. And we touch the untouchable. We touch it. For moments, right? For a moment. The more you do it, you get to touch it a little bit more, right? But you touch it. And you're like, oh, man. This is, this feels right. This is it. Right? You feel alive. You feel alive. There is no worry. There is no nothing. You get to touch it. And, and, and the reason why we get upset when we create artwork and we're like, ah, we're, you know, sometimes we get upset or we get annoyed or, you know, whatever, is because we didn't get to touch it. So the little boy in us realizes, right, we all have a little boy or girl, a little, little person, not boy or girl. We all have a little person in us. 
and and I'm going way off subject here now. And that little person gets understands, right? That oh man, like I, I, I didn't go say hi to God today, right? I didn't go say hi, like to put it in just words. A little boy cries, right? The little person cries. And that's where we get angry. We're like, man, my painting didn't come out right. You're not trying to get your painting to come out right. You're trying to go say hi to God. That's really what you're trying to do. And people that buy paintings, right? They start getting the, the message. They're like, oh, dude, can I go say hi to God too? That's really what's happening. I hope I made any sense to someone out there, guys. That's why they love the art. How's it going? Hi, Dad. I'm doing a little live right here. Oh, wow, of the internet. Peeps of Instagram. It, it, that's why they, they, they buy the artwork. Why the awkward? Why? No, no, no. I'm, I'm telling people something here. How's it going, dude? Give me five. Bam. Hey, Put guys. your seat. Put your seat. Hold on, dude. Uh -huh. this, is my, this is my son, Daniel. I got home from school. Dennis the Menace. Okay. Nah, he's not a menace. I work the menace. Sometimes, huh? Maybe, but, I don't know. but that's why people that's why people that's why when we go to a museum that's why I told you guys go to a museum because the older artists were forced either by uh, because there was a, a higher degree of work ethic maybe back in the day or you had to just do more to be show, to be shown and those artists who created a, a more or or just were more uh, forced to work longer hours more uh, had to had to find the untouchable by the sheer amount of work. And a lot of those are in the museums. So when you go to a museum and you see a Van Gogh painting, right? Van Gogh was a mess. But I'm almost sure he was not a mess when he painted. When he painted, he was touching, he was saying hi to God. He was like, hey, how's it going, God? Here, right? And and that, and, and you, get to, you get to meet God when you see a painting, right? I, I, I know it's a tired guys, bear with me. You see a Van Gogh painting, right? Whatever the, the painting is, and you're like, <sighs> yeah. You see paintings, you don't understand what the hell is going on, and you still like. <sighs> there's that you have to take in air, right? Because there's a a, a moment of a, a huge moment of silence, right? Happening in psychological silence, right? There's a suspension that's happening. Boom. All of a sudden, your mind, your mind, lets the heart show up. The mind suspends and then the heart goes, right? And then all of a sudden you're operating with your heart. As it should be, as human beings should do. That's why there's so much shit in the world, because we're, we're trying to keep operating with the tool, right? We're operating with, with, with the mind. That's why we have so much, so much crap in the world. And wars and this and that and, and, you know, devastation and lack and all this crap is because we're operating with our mind. We're operating with the tool. It's like trying to, we're using a cane to walk around when we don't need the cane. The cane is just a tool. It's just to, to help us climb little little hills and mountains, right? We're not using our legs. We're using the cane. And that's why we, that's, that's why we have a hard time sometimes because we're, we're using the tool. Not something. That's why we have a hard time a lot of the times. We keep using the cane. We're not using our legs. Megan says, I believe we're channeling with we paint. Absolutely. I believe that too, Megan. I'm, uh, uh, and you know, a lot of people get freaked out by the whole thing, you know, channeling. I'm not talking about, well, I personally don't mean like channeling, you know, something like, like dead people or whatever. Okay. I think that we're, we're, we are, we're being doorways, right? The, the the untouchable comes through us, right? The unconditioned is another form of putting it. The unconditioned. It's not conditioned, right? The the that by which we see, right? The uh the seer, right? The seer. The eye, I think uh, religions call it the eye too. Right, the seer, the, the aware, right, the conscious, is what's coming through, and that's that's I believe that's that's why that's why it feels like we're challenging. Like who's painting? Sometimes I ask myself, who the hell is painting? Because I know I know I'm not. But when I'm talking like that, I'm 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 saying I know like my thinking. 
The thinking me is not painting. If the thinking me was painting, I'd be bitching and complaining and crying and being upset about the colors not being right. I did this wrong. Oh my God, I should have perfected this this technique. Uh, and on and on. And it doesn't matter if you do it right, right, right. If it looks aesthetically pleasing, you may still not be painting. You may be uh, putting paint on a canvas, right? And the act looks like you're creating, like you're painting. You may be painting, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're creating artwork. If you're, if you're painting with your mind, you're painting. You're not creating artwork. I believe that if you're painting with your suspended mind, now you're creating artwork. And now, now that's, that's what people buy. People are not buying your paintings. Anyone can paint. People are, people are touching, are connecting with you. People are realizing their, 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 their beauty is really realizing, right? Their pure, their, their, their pureness, their purity is realizing that you created that in a state of purity. And that's what they're attracted to. They're like, dude, I want to touch God too. How much for that? I want to touch God. I know you touch God. Let me, let me go, let me go talk to God. That's what happens. Totally. That flow is a state of channeling. Totally. And that's why when we create art, we're like, man, what am I doing? What am I doing? That's why That's why Degas said, you know, Degas and everybody, every, all the greats have said it. Degas said, only when you when you don't know what you're doing is that you're actually creating artwork. No, don't, don't use it yet, Eko, because I'm charging it for your mom. Okay. No. My son's... My son's playing with my wife's phone. Oh, okay. And that's why the guy said that, right? Manet, Manet also touched that. Manet said, uh, Edward Manet, right? The guy who painted uh, Olympia. Uh, Manet said, only when, only one thing is true, he said. Paint what you see as quick as possible. Why? Why paint it as quick as possible, as fast as possible? Why did he say that? Because you don't get to judge it. If you're moving, you don't have time to judge it. That's what I get out of that. Raphael said the same thing. Raphael said, when one paint, one does not think. You either paint or you think, but you can't paint and think. It doesn't go together. It can't. It's impossible. Right? You, it's possible to paint, but, but he was referring to creating artwork. You cannot paint and create artwork at the same time. You cannot think and create artwork at the same time. It is literally impossible. You cannot. Now, this doesn't mean that you, you just... You just suspend it, right? You allow it. You allow it to rest. That's what you're doing. You put you put the tool away. You allow it to rest. And then when you need it, you, you pick it up again and you're like, oh, okay, I need to mix these colors. Uh, you know, magenta with this makes that. Or, you know, this mixture of colors. And then now you're using the mind, right? But then you paint and you put it away. So you pick it up and you put it away. Pick it up and you put it away. You learn how to dance, right? It's a dance. You learn how to dance with it. Anyways, guys, I don't want to make this way more longer than I've made it. Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Megan. I really appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Yeah, Dad, they're all awesome. They're all super awesome, huh? Yeah. But I feel like I, I, I wanted to touch on that because so many people... Uh, I'm not going to say including myself, my, myself first, because <laughs> my experience comes through me. They don't come from, from like, oh, I saw this artist doing that. Like, the reason I get to, to talk about it so, so in, in such a energetic way sometimes, it's because I've done it. I've done the wrong thing many times. I believe when you finish the piece of angels or guides, find the right person who is a match for the painting and get them to see it somehow. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Megan. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, and, and as I mentioned in, in, in marketing, uh, just show it, you know. That's that's what, I, that's what I do. I just show it. I just show it. And then, you know, the, the right person just kind of clicks with it. They're like, they're like, this makes sense to me, right? I, I want to go touch that too. I, I, I want it, it's really we're after the feeling and it's not and it's not a, 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 a it's not even we can't even call it feeling because it's not a feeling it's it, you're after the beingness the beingness right we're human beings right we forget that we're here even though I'm always I'm always shouting out do 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 more the reason I'm shouting out that it's because most of us don't do enough 
and that's why I realized that in my life. Uh, most of us are busy, but we don't. But we don't. We're not consistent, and we're not doers. We're not doing, doing, doing. Right? We kind of just do when we feel like it, uh, or we do a lot of stuff that doesn't take us to to, to where we want to go. Uh, and anyways, uh, so I'm always shouting about doing, but but before doing is being. Like we're we're human beings, not human doers, right? We're human beings. Like we we need to we need to find whatever it is for you, whether it's singing, gospel, meditation, walking, running, uh, music, yeah, music, playing an instrument, whatever, whatever you do, to go touch that that you you know that the the the, the People call it God, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever you do to go touch that, to go ground yourself. Some hippies call it grounding, <laughs> and it's true, though. No, it's it's, it's 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 being rooted, right, in the in the in the vertical aspect of us, which is being, right. We spend too much time in the horizontal. I've talked about this before many times. We spend too much time in the horizontal aspect of life, which is past and future, right? It's, it's linear. It's horizontal. Right, it's this horizontal thing. Our life is not horizontal. Our mental life is horizontal, and to some degree, our physical life is too horizontal. Right? You're you're born, you live, and you die. Right? Which is the most important thing is that we live. Right? Is that we live is vertical, but we we forget that. We forget that often. We forget that almost all the time. You know, and the people that remember, like you know, like I don't know, Jesus maybe. I don't know. For example, right? Buddha. The people that actually live in that state in the vertical state we're like oh man like you know we write books about them and all well we write books about just anyone but but we try to mimic them that's what i'm trying to say right we try to shadow them we try to be like them but really it's just that i think it's just these, these people just learn how to live in the, in the vertical whether they learn or they practice or whatever it was right it really comes out of pain. That's why. That's why I made the reference of of the magician movie, The Prestige, when he goes in and and dies, right? In that spoiler alert again, in that tub, a water tank. It's because every time you're gonna do a task, you have to go metaphorically, guys. Please, <laughs> metaphorically, <laughs> I have to say it. You 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 have to die, right? It has to die. That that which doesn't leave you alone. Right, the nagger, the thinker, the the uh, the tool. I call it a tool because it's a tool. It's a, it's, it's 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 a gift, right? It's a grandiose gift. It's a tool. That's how we created fire, and, and and we have cars, and we have electricity, and all of this. It's a tool. It helped us, right? But if we're not careful, it also hinders us because we we confuse it with ourselves, and it's not us. What I think, it's not me, right? And of course, this is I'm getting into a whole esoteric thing here. But, but I needed to say this, and I want to say it. I'm going to repeat this over and over when I get a chance, because this is the doorway into creating artwork. We have to suspend it. It has to become suspended. I don't know how you do that. There's different ways. There's reminders. There's mantras. There's prayer. Whatever you do, there is no right way. There is no wrong way. There is just the way. <laughs> that sounds super Yoda. Do another way. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, they're all awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate that. Guys, take care. I will talk to you guys soon again. I hope that you guys enjoy this. Uh, give it some hearts if you guys liked it. I want to keep sharing this stuff. And I also, uh, I want to... I want to thank everyone who's been following me on Instagram and apologize those who I have accidentally unfollowed. I don't mean to, guys. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, one of my assistants was helping me with a follow on follow thing and I'm like oh man I don't know how to do that and I think I'm doing it all wrong so I apologize for any inconvenience that I've that I've done guys on Instagram here I'm just I'm just trying to get this message out and I'm still trying to figure it out I'm gonna get it right but before I get it right I'm gonna get it going so thank you guys so much take care adios